that you're aware of. The first was a bill in 2011, which opened our um, state lands, including state parks and forests, to fracking or shale gas drilling. <coughs> and that was House Bill 133. Um, if you've been following some of the news, um, and, and my colleague Brian sitting here actually um, was really instrumental in, in some of um, uh, this, this work, um, but the uh, uh, I, I won't go into too much detail on it, but essentially there were some uh, memos, so communication memos um, at the state level with the Head of Department of Natural Resources and kind of going all the way up to the governor's office around planning for perhaps uh, going as far as, yes, marketing fracking in our state parks. And um, uh, that sort of was a big uh, scuttlebutt slash some folks calling it frack gate you may have seen in the media. Um, and basically um, sort of <coughs> prompted, we, we might uh, surmise the governor to make a reversal or switch course on his position on, on drilling in state land. So sort of where we are is uh, our law uh, statute says that, that drilling, uh, our state parks and lands are open to drilling, but we, um, we haven't put, uh, the state has not put anything really in place. Um, to, with a uh, commission to review leases for that process, and then the governor more recently um, reversed course with his uh, publicly with his position on that. And um, Brian can, if, if he so wishes, talk to, to that more later. Um, I wanted to give a little bit on uh, Senate Bill 315, uh, passed in 2010. Uh, was the governor's energy legislation? I think was uh, how it was termed. Uh, there's a lot of, of material in there, and so what I usually say, you know, the Ohio Environmental Council were, were um, really enmeshed at the State House. We were very engaged in that bill, in those um, those debates, those conversations, and we really felt that there was some good in there, there was some bad, and there, you know, was some ugly. And um, just a few highlights from that bill, of which you might be interested. Um, one of the good pieces there was a requirement for pre-drilling water well testing at the driller's expense, and a requirement also for industry to disclose source and amount of fresh water to be used for drilling. There was also some additional progress made in terms of chemical disclosure. However, unfortunately, the bill also um, still allowed drillers to withhold chemical information as trade secret, and also included language which would prevent uh, health providers from being able to legally fully discuss health problems associated with shell gas drilling. Um, and there's some nuance there to that language, and I just, you know, I'm, it's hard to, to get into the details, but um, some folks call that and believe that to be essentially um, a gag order, just not giving physicians, healthcare providers the room that they would need to fully discuss those matters. Um, oops, I skipped ahead a little soon. Uh, and then, um, more recently, last year's budget bill, uh, House Bill 59, included um, some problematic, what we felt was problematic language around radioactive shell gas waste streams. And um, again, you know, it's uh, complicated in terms of um, the way it was, was written uh, and had a lot to do with how you define in law what the waste um, stream materials are um, and uh, and basically how you define, how the state defined them, um, how I describe it is in such a narrow way that um, wouldn't result in the state testing a large amount of um, those shale gas waste streams. So um, one large portion of the waste stream being drill cuttings, um, uh, as we understand it, won't uh, be tested and scrutinized. And we have a real concern, and, and we're following this in um, at the Ohio EPA right now because there's some rulemaking around what's um, termed beneficial use of shale gas waste materials and we have concerns again about um, the radioactivity levels and will the material be tested the way in which the state has written, what the legislature has written um, the definition of uh, these materials in Ohio law. Um, and there's also been um, a, sort of a grandfathering in of, an, in of a number of brine treatment facilities in Ohio. I think there's about 23 of these facilities and a, a, another colleague of mine, Teresa Mills, has been really following these and knows much more uh, in detail uh, about those, but that's on sort of the, the liquid waste end of things. Um, 
Also currently in play, just worth mentioning, there is a severance tax bill, which is, um, uh, as I understand, still in <coughs> discussions and, and in progress. My colleague in my office, um, our, our chief lobbyist and our director of legal affairs, has been most closely following um, the severance tax debate. And, um, you know, basically within that, we were pushing for um, there to be um, capping of um, orphan oil and gas wells, as well as um, funding to, uh, enough funding, ample, uh, sufficient funding for ODNR to run their regulatory program, and also um, some funding for local communities uh, for the impacts that may be associated, uh, will be associated with this industry. And um, Howard Department of Natural Resources is also in the process of crafting uh, and writing up rules uh, or regulations uh, which um, provide sort of the details and um, more specifics for how <coughs> industry needs to go about their business um, to fill in you know the gaps that that is left uh, from this that is left from the statute so um, we are commenting and have convened a group of um, uh, groups uh, statewide groups in Ohio reviewing those rules we've been reviewing them for about a year and a half um, uh, following those that process and have put in comments on one the first section which has been released which is around horizontal well pads um, there's also mm, some rule work happening at the Ohio EPA excuse me I'm gonna take a quick sip um, around air um, there's there's um, some work around uh, air rules air permits um, air, a little bit of air monitoring work that they're doing and so we're um, doing our best to follow that and to sort of push um, those regulations to be strong um, and for more mo monitoring again of air emissions to occur. Um, and then our most recent effort um, that I want to talk about is our uh, what we've coined as the Safer Gas Act and this is a, a piece of legislation that has about 34 plus provisions within it and um, the the large picture goal is to close what we still see as a number of regulatory uh, gaps gaps in Ohio law gaps in Ohio regulation uh, pertaining to the oversight of this industry and that um, goes from environmental protections um, including protection of public water sources and floodplains to increased air monitoring like I was talking about um, to things like uh, government transparency, industry transparency, increased public input. We want to see uh, the right to know, the right to the right to know about where a well will be, um, the right to appeal permit terms and conditions. Um, also, things like a publicly accessible and, and user friendly website or um, web page uh, database at ODNR where you could go and, for example, find um, information about a well uh, that is nearby to your property or an injection well, as we are likely to see injection wells um, continue to increase in number in the state. That you can find that information in an easy way um, and not have to have uh, uh, you know, a lot of kind of tech savviness and uh, certain sophisticated software. Um, back to things like more inspectors, uh, so on the enforcement end of things, better reporting and tracking of incidents on ODNR's website. Again, so you can, the public can find that information. <coughs> and uh, waste fluid recycling and reuse, better use of, better regulation, I'm sorry, of waste materials. Um, and there's a whole portion within there as well about landowner um, protections and uh, projections for leasing. Um, so again, to reiterate, the OEC, um, you know, the, our, our kind of um, premises and, and position on where we need to go with, um, with uh, fracking in the state, it, you know, it has a lot to do with better oversight, better re regulation. We, need, we believe that we need more science on the impacts. Uh, we believe that we need to capture the external costs. Um, the severance tax is, is one piece and part of that. Um, which can provide for those impact fees for local communities again. Um, and um, we believe also in supporting local monitoring um, efforts and that, um, that we'd like to see Ohio EPA take a much more kind of expansive and, and serious role in terms of um, upping their resources again around air monitoring. The last time we checked in, I believe they had one site where they were doing air monitoring um, of, a, of a well. And so that's a real concern for moving forward in the future. Um, as well as monitoring of certain <coughs> because 
um, surface waters are in uh, their per, their um, jurisdiction and, and uh, as well. And I've covered a lot. Um, I guess what I'll leave you with are just a couple uh, a couple thoughts, and then how you can get involved. So um, <clears throat> you know, natural gas has been talked about as a bridge uh, fuel to take us from dirty coal to renewable sources of energy, and um, it's worth noting that a bridge requires us to get from one place to another, and um, other, otherwise it's simply a bridge uh, to nowhere. And so while natural gas, you know, we recognize that it's cleaner burning on the end use than coal, and, and certainly we recognize the significant health impacts, um, you know, related to, to coal burning from asthma and, and heart disease and, you know, um, the fact that we have uh, streams that run orange in Ohio still um, in our south uh, eastern and eastern part of the state, um, we, we should take a lesson from that and, um, and do uh, this. Uh, uh, if we knew now uh, <coughs> what we know then, we would have done things differently. And so we need to take that lesson um, and recognize um, that uh, this is our commons, our, our clean air, our, our clean uh, water, our land, um, uh, that you know, it needs to be protected. And so we're really pushing for stronger oversight over this industry and um, that uh, this is not uh, a bridge fuel if it, if it doesn't take us to uh, renewable energies. So um, how you can get involved, you can contact your state legislators. Um, you know, I can't say that enough, that hearing from constituents even a handful of constituents calling with a concern makes a difference. Um, your one voice can make a difference. Um, you know, consider commenting and, and learning about getting involved in Ohio DNR's rulemaking process. Um, I am available at the Ohio Environmental Council, as are my colleagues, to help educate around that and to help walk you through that. We share our comments. We like to share our comments and, and allow um, citizens to use those. Um, as a model to, to <coughs> read from and, and um, put something forward that is your own, um, looking at those as a guide. And um, perhaps the easiest, you can always um, join the Ohio Environmental Council. You can um, get, simply get on our newsletter and mailing list and learn more about what we're doing and uh, hear about updates from us. Um, and so um, just really thank you for your time and attention today. And. Um, <coughs> um, I think I'll end there. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. We do have about 10 or 15 minutes that we can do question and answer with Melanie. Does anyone